Welcome everyone. This is the Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar and this is the third dimension series and today we're going to cover the topic turning on the lights in AutoCAD 2017. So welcome, so glad you could join us. Uh, this will be presented by Victoria and let's go to our next page. Uh, Victoria is a support specialist out of Manchester. I'll be uh, assisting today out of Lake Oswego and I don't know that uh, Nauman's joining us today but he's uh, often with us assisting with our Q&A portion of the webinar. So before we get started just a few reminders that uh, you're welcome to put questions in the chat window and we'll try and answer those as time allows. Uh, this session will be recorded and we'll make those links available uh, to you after the webinar and also you have the uh, links in your reminder email that shows additional webinars and where you can leave feedback and you see that link uh, question and answer feedback you can also post questions after the webinar if we didn't uh, quite cover what you were wanting to find out about or ran out of time. Our webinar series uh, has a lot of features to it and, and you'll be able to take on other topics coming up here is a list of future topics. You can watch past webinars on YouTube at our link here. All the data sets that Victoria will be featuring today are available at this link and uh, you can also pursue the topic further through these additional links such as the uh, forums, uh, online community forums. And of course our Autodesk Knowledge Network is a great resource for further information, getting specific questions answered and some assistance with any particular uh, topics or problems that you're encountering with AutoCAD LT or AutoCAD. Again, today's webinar features turning on the lights in AutoCAD 2017 and we see this uh, nice rendering here and we'll look forward to hearing more information on this topic from Victoria in just a moment. But let's go ahead as we typically do and start out with a few quick uh, polls. If you would uh, be so kind as uh, sharing whether this is your first webinar or not. Give that just a few more moments and we'll go ahead and close the poll. So most of you, 95% uh, of you are returning uh, attendees and we appreciate you coming back and some of you are coming to the webinar for the first time, so welcome. Let's go to our next poll. We'd like to know which uh, AutoCAD uh, application you're using, AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT, or one of our uh, verticals there. I'll give that just a moment, I'll let you finish answering. Uh, most people here uh, are using AutoCAD and then quite a few on our AutoCAD verticals, so I'll go ahead and close that poll and give you the results there. So one more uh, quick poll and our third poll regarding lighting. Specifically, do you already use the lighting tools in AutoCAD? So for most of our uh, attendees, Victoria, this is something pretty new or they've occasionally used them. So this is going to be a very uh, helpful, informative uh, presentation for everyone. So let me go ahead and go to our next slide and we're going to cover these uh, features today. Uh, just a quick view of our agenda, default lighting, natural versus artificial. We'll cover sun and sky, user-defined lights, and then luminary assemblies. And Victoria provided us some examples here of an exterior of a building in different lighting situations. So on that note, Victoria, we're anxious to see all this in AutoCAD. Thanks, Martin, for the great introduction. Uh, let me just take the, uh, I'll take control of the screen here. Okay, here we go. 
And just let me know when you can see my screen. Yep, I see it. Excellent. All right, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us today. I'm really excited to present lighting to you in AutoCAD 2017. Uh, so some of you might have models that, um, that you've either worked on in 3D, maybe you've uh, played around with some of the tools based on some of the things that you've learned in our previous webinars about 3D modeling. Um, maybe you've played a little bit with the rendering tools, um, or maybe you just want to learn some new tips and tricks uh, to light your models a little bit better. So my goal here today is to get you started uh, using the um, the basic lighting tools, getting you acclimated with the interface, where to find these tools, um, and how to get a little bit more realistic renderings uh, out of AutoCAD 2017. Uh, so the first thing I'd like to note is that the rendering engine changed in uh, starting with AutoCAD 2016. We went from the old Mental Ray engine to the new Rapid RT engine, and it is a physical renderer. Um, which means that all of the lights are now photometric, or they're processed as photometric lights. Uh, so the old standard lights um, are now obsolete. Uh, there are a couple of features that are still in AutoCAD 2017 um, in order to enable you to uh, go backwards um, for backwards compatibility reasons. Um, but for the most part, we're going to focus on the features uh, that you want to be using in the current version. So to start here, uh, let me just show you where I am in AutoCAD. Um, I've opened this model here that we'll be using to demonstrate some of the uh, exterior lighting features or uh, natural lighting. Uh, I am in the 3D Basics workspace. So if you click on the workspace gear down in the lower right, you'll see this little flyout, and you have, uh, by default, you're probably in the drafting and annotation workspace. So if you want to follow along, just click over to the 3D basics. You'll see the ribbon. Uh, you'll start on the home ribbon. I'm going to go over to the visualize tab on the ribbon. This is where most of the tools that we'll be using are located. We'll be focusing specifically on the lights panel right here and the sun and location panel right here. Uh, if we have time at the end, I have a cool a uh, little wildcard feature that I'll show you in the materials, um, but that's sort of a bonus thing. If there's no time, then I'll record a little screencast for you afterwards and send it over um, with the follow-up email. So I've got this model here, um, and we might want to light it um, from the exterior. Now, if you're in AutoCAD and you haven't done anything with lights before, um, every single model that you have starts with default lighting. And default lighting has two lights, um, they're distant light sources that follow the viewpoint as you rotate around your model. So if I hold down the shift key and my middle mouse button and I rotate, you'll notice that the, uh, the light starts on the left-hand side of the model there and the right roof is, uh, is in shadow. But as I rotate, those shadows shift. So those light sources are always coming from the same direction, that, uh, that lower left to upper right. And so you can't change the position of them, but what this does is if you want to just do a quick render with default lighting enabled, you don't end up with a completely black image. So I'll show you real quick. Um, for uh, presentation purposes, what I've done is rendered a couple of these. Um, I've done all the, the, the renders ahead of time so that we're not sitting here waiting for the program to render while I could be teaching you something new. Uh, so here is the default lighting from the southwest isometric view. And then here it is again um, from the next, uh, it'll be southeast isometric view. And you'll see that the, the shadows are coming from, they're being cast in the same direction, no matter which way you've rotated your model. Um, so this is useful for a quick render just to, to see what, what you're working with, but it's very unrealistic. Um, so the first thing that you typically want to do when you start adding lights to your drawing is to disable that default lighting and start to add your own. So you can either add uh, user-defined lights or sunlight. So we'll start here um, on the lights panel. I'll give you a quick tour. Uh, there's this create light drop down and that gives you four different types of user-defined lights. There are point lights, spotlights, distant lights, and web lights. 
you have these shadow options, and this is one of those things that um, is in here for backwards compatibility. You really, uh, since all, um, with the new renderer, all lights will cast shadows and all objects will cast and receive shadows when you render. Um, so no matter what this is set to, you're always going to get realistic looking shadows in your final render. This will just change the way that the model looks when you're navigating around in AutoCAD. So we're not really going to get into these today, um, but just know that they're here. So we've got uh, the default lighting toggle, which is right here. You can turn it on and off. You could also use the default lighting system variable and set it to zero, which turns it off, or uh, by default it's set to one, which means that it's on. You can adjust the exposure and white balance while the default lighting is still on. And what this does is um, it shows you how much light is applied to the rendered image. And you can brighten it by lowering the number or darken it by uh, increasing the number. You can use this slider here. So you see, the, you know, it gets all really washed out. Uh, if I bring it up here, it gets really dark. Um, the default is 8.8, .8, so I'm just going to set that back. And then uh, if you look at the white balance, what the white balance does is, um, so it's measured in uh, Kelvin color temperature, and it changes the tone of the rendered image um, from either, uh, well, if we go down to, uh, if, you, if you decrease the number, you get cooler colors, greens and blues. If you increase the number, you get warmer tones like reds and oranges. There we go. Um, so I'm just going to set that back. The default is uh, 6,500. Let's set it back to normal there. And you'll see the, the model adjust. Uh, this right here, uh, the light lift display, um, will show your user-defined lights as uh, little light glyphs that can be selected in model space so that you can then change their properties. And this turns them on or off so that they're visible or invisible in your model. And then your lighting units. Uh, lighting units, this looks like an older model. Now, this is interesting. Um, by default, right now, um, by default, the inter the <laughs> the lighting units should be set to international, um, but since this model was created in an older version of AutoCAD, it was set to zero. So what we can do is change this to international lighting units. That is the default um, lighting unit. If you want to use American units, you can switch to that. Um, so then uh, American units, just to define it, uh, American units are measured in uh, foot candles, and international units are measured in lux. All right, so I'll tuck that away. Uh, the next one over here, we have um, sun and location. Um, so the, uh, the sun can be turned on using this status icon. Actually, let me, let me show you distant light first. I, I want to uh, show you one of the user-defined lights before we jump into the, the really accurate sun um, information. So over here on my lights panel, I'm going to click to drop down the create light and pick on distant light. Now distant light uh, has been around for a long time. Um, before these sun and location settings were in here, distant lights were often used to simulate sunlight in older models. So uh, you can add this and, and what it does is it, um, it will light your model uniformly. It's really good if you have a model that's really dark and you want to fill the background and, and you want to just brighten everything all at once. Um, distant light's pretty good for that. Um, however, it is really difficult to control, so you can, it's kind of an all or nothing uh, light, so it can wash out a model really quickly. But I'll put one in here, and it'll prompt me to turn off the default lighting. So I'll say yes, I want to turn it off because I'm adding user-defined lights. And then this right here, um, this right here is just warning me that the uh, distant lights might overexpose my image because um, they're all being uh, rendered as uh, photometric lights, as I discussed um, at the beginning here. Uh, that's because of the new rendering engine. So what I'm going to do is allow the distant light just to show you what it looks like, um, but typically it's recommended to 
disable them um, with the new rendering engine. So I'll click on Allow Distant Lights. And this prompts me for a from location. So that's where the light is generated from. I'll just accept the default of 000. And then 2 um, is where the light is shining towards. So I'll just pick a point up here on the chimney and click on Exit to complete it. And now you'll see that the lighting in the model changes there. I'll zoom in a little bit for you to see. So if I were to render this image, let me show you really quickly what it would look like. So this is my distant light. Uh, you'll notice how the whole left side is really blacked out, but you get some light on these other faces over here where the light's hitting. Um, but you can see how this, if you brightened it any more, it would really wash the image out. Um, so you end up with some really, really uh, high contrast looking images. It's just not very realistic. Um, but let's talk about the properties of that first uh, before we move on to sun and, sun and location. Uh, there is a system variable called, or a, uh, sorry, a command, uh, light list, which will open up the lights in model uh, palette, tool palette here. This will show all of the lights in your model. And here we can pick on the distant light and I will right click it and I can either delete the light from the model or select properties. I just want to select properties so that we can talk about this a little bit. I'm going to bring it out here and just so that you can see everything all at once here. Okay, these are all of the properties available to you for distant lights. You can name it. I highly recommend naming all of your lights because as soon as you start adding, you know, point light and distant light and um, web lights, uh, they can get out of control really fast. It's hard to remember which one is which. So if you give them very unique names, it's much easier to keep track of them and adjust them, make minor adjustments later when your model gets complicated. Uh, this type um, is distant, but it's a, it's read only. You can't change this here. It just tells you what kind of light you're working with. You can turn it on or off. You can change the intensity factor of that light and the filter color. You can also change lamp intensity or lamp color. Um, but other than that, oh, and then you can change the, the to and from vectors, or you can just change the source vector if you know, um, the angle at which you want your, um, your vector to come from to hit your model. So I'm just going to close this out. We'll talk about some more of these properties uh, when we get to the other types of light. I'm going to delete this distant light from my model. All right. And just make sure that default lighting is still disabled. And from here, what I'm going to do is turn the sun status on. Uh, this Dialog just lets me know that there are different exposure settings that are recommended for sunlight. So I'm going to go ahead and just have those uh, settings auto-adjusted there. And you see the model change a little bit. Okay, so the first thing that you'll want to note about the um, about enabling the sun is that you end up with a horizon in the distance, but not until you turn the perspective on. So if you're sitting here in parallel um, orientation, uh, you'll notice that the sky is um, the sky is off, but you can't change this um, to turn the sky on if you wanted to. It's it's locked out. Uh, you can come over here to the view cube, click on that arrow in the lower right, and pick the perspective. And that'll give you a more realistic view of your model to begin with um, by enabling perspective. And then you get access to um, a little more control over the sky background. So right here with the sky off, if I were to render this, it would look a little dark um, because it's not, uh, it's not emulating a realistic sky background. Um, so what turning on sky background and illumination does is it emulates the way that light actually um, the way light actually refracts in the atmosphere um, when the sunlight comes through it and then hits your model. So I have a couple of renders here to show you the difference. 
Uh, this right here was rendered at the same time of day in the same location, just with the sky off. And then this is the same thing, just with the sky turned on. And so you get a much more realistic looking, uh, looking render if you turn the sky on. So now I've done that. Uh, the next thing is to set your model in an accurate geographic location. So if you know that your model is, um, I'm going to use our Boston office location as, a, uh, as an example. Um, you can use the geographic location tools within AutoCAD to set the location of your model and put it in to, a, uh, to those real coordinates so that the um, sunlight will be accurately emulated for the time and date um, that you designate. So you have two options here. Um, the bottom one here, you can use a KMZ or a KML file, which just have, um, they're importing GIS coordinates uh, that you might already have on hand. Um, we're going to demonstrate the first option here, which is to use this from map option. So I'll click on from map and it brings me into the geographic location tool. Um, I've already used this once this session uh, when I was practicing ahead of time. There is a notification that will come up and tell you that you need to be logged in to Autodesk 360 in order to access this. And you can do that up here in the right hand corner where it says I'm logged in v studly. You can just drop down this uh, uh, this arrow and there'll be an option to log in. So once you're logged in you'll see this uh, map come up and up here I'm just going to type in the address 23 Dry Dock, Boston, Massachusetts. And I'm going to drop the marker. And if it looks accurate, just click Next. Looks good. And then it's going to populate a list of GIS coordinate systems for me. I'm just going to pick, pick the top one. Uh, if you know which specific one you need for your uh, site, then go ahead and pick that out of the list. And then it's going to ask me to pick the location for the, uh, the model. I'm just going to pick this lower corner and accept the default for the north angle. If you knew this ahead of time and you knew that the north angle was, you know, 90 degrees or 260 degrees on your model or something, you could set that up. Um, it might be a little easier to set up in plan view ahead of time, uh, but we'll just walk through this really quickly. Now you'll notice that the map will start to generate in front of me, but I don't really need the map for rendering purposes. Um, I might add a background later or something like that, uh, but I, I don't want to render the map. So I'm going to come up in here. You'll notice I'm on the geolocation uh, contextual ribbon tab that came in here as soon as I started using the map features. I'll scroll down to the bottom and just turn the map off. And once you've inserted this location, the sun settings will remember that location for you. So now we can be done with this geolocation tab. We'll go back over to visualize. And you'll see that that map marker is still in the drawing. Now from here, you come back onto the sun and location panel, and you can either use the sliders to adjust the date and the time, or um, what I prefer to do is open up the sun properties. So here are my sun properties. And this will show me the, um, that the sun is on. It'll show me the intensity factor of the sun, the color of the sun. I typically just leave these alone um, because they, they do accurately um, uh, model what the sun's intensity would be at a particular geographic location um, based on the azimuth, the altitude, and your source vector. So these are generated from that geographic location. Uh, so down here, uh, I'm going to set the date to today. See that this picker I find to be a little easier, but whatever works for you. I'll just double click on May 12th and it populates. And you notice that the background changes a little bit to reflect these settings. And then let's just change this to 7 a.m. and we'll take a look at what this looks like. Oh, where'd I go? There's 7. So if I pick 7 a.m. it gets darker. That's just as the sun's starting to rise, right? And if I pick like, let's say 11 a.m., this is what it starts to look like here. And if I go to 3 p.m., you see that sunlight shift around the model. 
And if I go up to like 7 p.m., you'll start to see the evening light. Now this, um, when you're looking at this in model space as you're, uh, as you're just adjusting the settings, I am in realistic mode. Um, all right, let me just close these panels for a second. Uh, up here in my upper left, you'll see that I'm in the realistic visual style. Um, typically, this, this does show you a rough approx approximation of what the lighting effects will look like, but um, they're not totally accurate to what the render will look like in the end. So let me show you what that'll look like. Here was 7 a.m. with the sky on in that same location. And there's 7 p.m. And there's 2.30 in the afternoon. So you see the, the sun just shifts around the model there. So those are sun and location settings in AutoCAD 2017, as well as default lighting and distant lights. Um, if we don't have any quick questions, um, I know that we are rushing right through this, but I do have a lot more to show you. Uh, Martin, do we have anything pressing? Or Alex? No, pen no pending questions at this time, Victoria. Excellent. All right. I'm just going to close out this model. Uh, these will be in the data set, so if you guys want to check them out after, you can. Um, just download them from that box site. Uh, I will try to remember to send out the email. I got a lot of great responses from people last week when we sent out the data sets and links um, via email. So thank you all for your responses. I was glad to hear back from you all. Um, all right, so from here, uh, let's jump into this user-defined lights uh, file. We will talk about uh, point lights and spot lights in this particular one. So in this model, um, I just have, you might recognize this from a previous webinar, I just have, um, I've added a ceiling since we last used it uh, just to emulate a, an actual room. Um, but I will hold down my shift and middle mouse button and just orbit a little bit so you can see we're just using you know, a couple simple materials, a table, and a window with some glass in it. Um, let's say that I want to add a couple of lights within this room. Um, we're going to add a point light, and we're going to add a uh, spotlight. And I'll show you the difference between the two of them. Um, I just want to check my light list. I'll open up my light list again, uh, my lights in model. So you can see I have no lights in this model yet. Um, my default lighting is disabled. So I'll go to the Create Light ribbon um, drop-down, and I'll just select uh, Point Light. Now the Point Light, um, sorry, uh, Point Lights don't have a target. They just illuminate everything around them in all directions. Uh, think of them like a candle or a light bulb hanging on a string. Um, so if I add a Point Light to my model, I'm just going to add it. I'll add it right in here and we can move it later. Uh, you see that this lights up the model inside. It gets a, you know, makes a, uh, washes out the floor a little bit. Um, it illuminates the wall just a little bit and it um, dissipates as it goes. So unlike those distant lights that don't, um, the light doesn't dissipate over time, or I always say time, the light doesn't dissipate over distance. Um, point lights do dissipate over distance. Uh, so you see it get darker and darker the farther away from the light you get. It's a little more realistic than a distant light. So if I'm having trouble selecting this in the model, you can see I ended up selecting that wall. A uh, quick trick is to go into the lights and model panel uh, palette and click it there and you'll see that it selects it in the model for me so I don't have to play, um, you know, try to pick the light over and over again. So from here I can right click on it and say properties. Uh, from here I can turn that Let's say I want to turn the glyph off. You notice that the glyph disappears. I can still select the light. So I'll turn the glyph back on just so you can see where it is. And then we'll open up the properties. And I'll move the properties over here. I want you to be able to see them as I work with them, um, but also see the light glyph here and how the model changes. Okay. So in the properties palette, you'll see the name of the light. So you might want to rename this to something very specific, you know, light on table. 
maybe it's point light on table, but once you come into the properties, you can see very clearly that it's point light. Now, as opposed to the distant light, um, point light, you can actually change the type of light it is from a spotlight, uh, from a point light to a spotlight or a web light. Um, so those three types are interchangeable. You can turn it on and off. You can change the intensity factor, the filter color. Here, I'll show you. 0.5 intensity will um, uh, will drop the intensity of the light. So you get less light that way. And you see that you can now start to see the, um, the pattern in the floor. It's not quite as washed out. You can change the filter color, change it to something like 205. You get more warm tones, change it to that gray color, and it really starts to look darker. Uh, if you wanted, for some reason, to plot the light glyphs um, when you plot, and you want them to show up on your on your final plot, you can turn those on. Um, I've never found a real use for them, but I'm sure it's there for a reason, and somebody's had a reason to plot them. Um, here's your glyph display. You can turn it on or off. You can change the lamp intensity. This is measured in candelas. And if you open up, you click on that little icon, it'll open up the lamp intensity uh, dialog box. You can change whether or not the intensity is measured in, or you can change this from intensity to flux to luminance. Um, I'm just going to leave it at the default here. Um, you can also change the intensity factor in here. Um, let's see what happens if I drop this down to like 500 candelas. Okay, so you see it gets darker. And I'm going to brighten it up so it doesn't look like a big black screen for you. <laughs> Put it back to 1500, and I'm going to change my color, my lamp color, back to uh, white. And change my intensity back to like 1. So that's the default there. So you can see that I can quickly change the, the way that the light looks in the model and how it's being cast um, just by adjusting some of these, playing with some of the settings. Uh, you can also change the lamp color based on some of these presets. The fluorescent light might look a little, I mean, that definitely looks more fluorescent. Uh, it's got that yellowy color to it. Um, xenon takes on that, that true white looking color. Or mercury takes on that greenish blue hue. Uh, so you can change those um, and get some really quick ideas of what the light or how the light will affect your your final render. Um, one other thing that you can change here is the position. So let's say uh, let's say I didn't really like that it's sitting on top of the table. Maybe I want this to be a little higher. I can change this to maybe four feet. And you'll notice that now that it's up above, it's a little softer uh, on the floor and you can get a little bit more light on the table and the details there. Um, let me select that one more time. Uh, down the bottom, it talks about attenuation. Um, the only thing you need to know about attenuation to start with is that all of the lights in AutoCAD 2017 are um, processed as photometric lights, which means that the attenuation is always calculated as an inverse square. Uh, I'm not going to get into the technicalities of that. We could probably talk all day about attenuation. Um, but just if you want to look it up later, uh, there's plenty of documentation on it, and I'll provide a couple of links in the uh, in the data set afterwards. All right, so that is a point light, and what I'm going to do here is just, I don't want to delete it from the model, I just want to turn it off so that we can talk about a different kind of light. So tuck this to the side. There we go. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is spotlights. Now, spotlights go in sort of like a, a sort of like a point light, except a um, a spotlight has a um, a target. So let's say I start my um, maybe I want to oh it's going to uh, prompt me for a source location. So I'm going to start it at this upper left hand corner, and then I'm going to point point it at a particular location. So I want to aim it at the table. I'm just going to pick a spot on the table and exit, and it'll give me a default spotlight with all the default uh, settings in it. Okay, so now we have this spotlight. It looks a little dark. Um, I'm going to select it, and then it should open up in the properties here, and we'll talk about the properties of that spotlight. We'll move the model over so you can see it. Oh, 
Okay. So now that we have our spotlight, you can see that it has a couple of rings, a couple of cones of light. Um, the first one, uh, the one on the outside is the fall off, and the one on the inside is called the hot spot. Um, so the closer the hot spot and the fall off are to each other, the harder line you're going to get between um, light and darkness in your model. So you get a, a really hard ring of light if they're right on top of each other. The farther away you move them from each other, the softer it's going to be. Uh, so the softer transition from that cone, that, uh, that inner hotspot cone and uh, where the light stops. So I'll demonstrate that for you here. So again, I would rename this, you know, spotlight, whatever. Um, I could turn it on and off. Now here's my hotspot angle. I can change this. Let's say I only want it to be like five degrees. Um, and then my, and you notice that that inner cone got really, really narrow. Um, so you get a really hot spot on the table there. And then if I change the fall off angle to, let's say, 60, it'll get wider. And I'll get a really soft transition between that hot spot and where the light fades to complete darkness. So you can change the intensity factor. Maybe this is a little dark for us. We want you know, intensity factor of two, or let's try five, and we'll get real close to the model in a second. Okay, so we'll come in here. Now that we know where that hot spot is. Um, so again, uh, this isn't really showing um, the light as accurately as it would when it renders. Uh, it's just giving a rough approximation. Um, so I might, I don't want to do it in the middle of the demo here, but if I rendered this, you'd see a nice bright spot on the table here and where this, where this cone um, is. You can actually, you can adjust the hotspot by pulling these as well, um, pulling the grips. So maybe I want a smaller hotspot. So it's still, um, it's still not showing that bright spot on the model, but once you render, you'll see a very hot spot and then it'll fade out to the, um, to the fall off. Let's just pull the fall off in. I'm going to grab, oh, I lost my, uh, lost my light. I'm just going to grab it from my list. And you see the little uh, arrow there? I'm just going to grab the arrow for my fall off. Maybe I want to pull it into here. Oh, no, it went too far out. Okay. So if you see that, if you're trying to uh, adjust the grips and it doesn't work for you, go back into that properties panel, the, the properties palette and uh, you can adjust that fall off there. You know, maybe I want this to be five degrees. There we go. So that shows a little more accurately. You get that, that little spot on the floor there. Maybe I can make it a little more intense so that you can see it. I can change the filter color again. Okay. So again, a lot of the same uh, properties are available here. Um, the only difference with the spotlight is that you have the control over the hot spot and the fall out, uh, the fall off angle. Uh, so I won't repeat myself on those. If we have time at the end, I'll come back and show you a render with that hot spot on there. Um, I just don't want to do it in the middle of presentation here. So let's switch over to the next file. So the last thing here that I want to talk about before we get into luminary assemblies, if we have a couple of minutes to talk about them, is web lights. So that would be the fourth user-defined light. Uh, in this model, you'll see that I, I have the same exact model, but I've added some of these, uh, I've added these strange looking glyphs here. And let me show you, I'm going to pop into 2D wireframe for a second and zoom in. Uh, check these out, they're kind of weird looking, right? So you get that really weird looking shape. Um, this one's got a, a weird like hot air balloon look to it. This one's very, very skinny. And this one's got a weird asymmetrical shape to it. Now this one over on the right, uh, these are all web lights, by the way. They're all web lights uh, that I've added to this model. Um, web lights are probably the most realistic way for you to show uh, light in your model and render a really realistic image. Uh, let me show you 
an example quickly. Uh, these are both rendered with web lights. Now you'll see them up on the wall. Each one of them has a different shape um, that, it, that it casts for light, different intensity, and a different shape. And I, I've rendered it here with a couple of Martin's uh, plants from the last, uh, the last 3D demo we did here. And you can see that they, they cast those accurate shadows onto the floor, onto the walls, onto the window. Um, but they have those different uh, light shapes to give you an accurate representation of what your lights would look like in real life. So these web files, uh, the, the, the files that I use to um, create the shape of the web, uh, come from manufacturers. So let's get back. Uh, let me dial it back to inserting a web light here. Same way that you would insert another light, we'll just select the web light option and your asked for location. Now the web light goes wherever you want it to go. Um, if I wanted to place it over here, I could place it over here, and you get this red glyph. So this one right here is the default. And I left one on the, mall, on the wall there, just so that I could show you in the render what this default web light looks like when you render it. So let's select this one. Um, you'll notice they show up in the model here. I'm just going to uh, mouse over the properties. So here's my web light. Um, again, you can change the type if you want to go back to a spotlight or a point light. You can. Um, you can turn it on and off. You can change the intensity, the color, um, all of the same things that you can change in the other uh, lights you can change here. The really interesting thing about web lights is that you can add a web file that describes the shape of the light. And it's as if you took a light bulb um, or a light fixture and put it inside a box and then measured in 360 degrees what that light was doing. Um, so maybe off to the, the left in the middle it went out you know two inches and then straight up it might have gone out three inches and you know I'd, I'm, I've never done these, uh, these tests in a, in a lab environment or anything but this is a pretty good way to picture um, how those measurements are done. Uh, so here you can add a web file by clicking on this little icon and what I've done is I've downloaded a bunch of IES web files from a manufacturer and they are, um, oh here are some, there are some default ones installed with AutoCAD. If you want to access them they're in your program data file. Let me just show you real quick. So if you go to your uh, C drive Program data, Autodesk, AutoCAD 2017, R21, ENU, web files. There are some sample ones that you can use here. So here's a linear cove light. Now you'll see on this graph um, the shape of the, of the light that's emitted from that particular fixture is illustrated here. Um, here's what a linear pendant looks like. Here's a point recessed um, medium. It looks like 75 watts. And here's a wall washer. It's very similar, right? But there's that second little cone for this one. Um, there's another recess light, 250 watts. It's uh, got that really strange looking shape. So each one of these lights generates an IES file. And manufacturers publish these. You can download them from their website and then use them uh, with your lights in AutoCAD. So let's just take a look at what that sconce looks like. We'll say OK. And then over here, you can see that the sconce, that, uh, that red orb now changed to uh, the IES shape um, that, that, uh, that that sconce represents in real life. I'm going to switch back to 2D wireframe because it lets me zoom in on it so you can see exactly what it looks like. Um, then I'll select it. Oh, OK, well, it disappeared. Um, but that's the, the 3D representation of that file at any rate. All right, so those are web lights. Um, let me, I'll show you that rendering again. Uh, so this is what, I, I put a couple of samples in. These are what those shapes look like when they're up on the wall. 
Um, this is that default one over on the right hand side. And you'll see that it has a much, um, a much more natural look to each of these lights. You can customize them. All right, so let's say you have a light fixture and you want to, um, you want to uh, create a luminary, what we call luminary assembly. Uh, you want to insert a block that has a light and then it maybe has a lampshade around it or something. Um, we can do that by creating a luminary assembly and then inserting it into the file. And in order to do that, I have to open up. Um, I wasn't sure we are going to get this far, so this should be kind of cool. Um, I'll open up these two files. All right. So what I have done here is I've created the same file twice. Um, I've just created a, this is a 3D object. Um, I extruded a, a square and then um, as a surface and then thickened it to an eighth inch thick. This is a six by six square extruded one foot. And then inside of it, I'm just gonna rotate down to show you. In this one, I have a point light. So again, I'm trying to select that and it doesn't work. Go back over to my lights and model uh, palette, select that point light, right click on it and go to properties. You can see the properties of this particular light. Um, now, I'm, I'm not afraid to render anymore because we've hit the portion in the presentation where it's, it's gonna be okay if we, uh, if we lock it up a little bit. So we'll have some fun. Uh, I've set this to low um, in this particular file so that we can, uh, th this will be the lowest quality render. It should be pretty quick. Um, so cross your fingers and hope that this works. So we'll click on it, we'll render, we'll see the render window, and this is what that looks like. Um, now you could insert this file as a block into another file and have, you know, one of these cloth shaded lamps or something. Um, the way that I did this was to create a material that is self-illuminating. So this is that little extra bit that I was going to add in with the, uh, the materials panel here. So if I open up my materials browser, I have this beige fabric. Um, let me... I'm going to rename this one. We'll edit it first. We'll call this beige loom. This way I know that this is my illuminating uh, material. I'll show you what I started with because I started with a, a material from the Autodesk Materials Library um, that does not I think it's in the fabrics. I started with a material that does not self-illuminate and then I turned it into a self-illuminating material. So there it is, uh, beige. I'm going to click this arrow here to add it to my model. You'll see it show up in my document materials. And then from here, um, that's my self-illuminating one. Okay, so this is my regular material here from the Autodesk Materials Library. If I drag and drop this onto the model and then I do that render again, you'll just get that, that you know, it, the light is inside, the point light is inside this model, um, but it can't penetrate it, so it can't illuminate that object to make it look like it's glowing the way a lampshade would. So in order to do that, what you can do is copy the material over, name it to something that you're going to remember, like uh, beige loom, and then You'll come in here and adjust the settings. So what I did here was I selected this uh, self-illumination checkbox. Um, fabric materials are able to be self-illuminated. You'll notice that some objects or some, uh, some types of materials can't be self-illuminated. Um, usually like the metallic ones I think aren't able to be. Uh, so you'll have to go in and find one that's like fabric or something like that. I know this one works. Um, Okay, so from here, um, I changed the filter color because as I'll, I'll show you in a second here, I'm going to copy this so that I remember what it was. I'm just gonna change my filter color back to white and I'll show you what happens uh, in a moment. 
So here's my filter color that I changed, and then I changed this to a lampshade exterior look, and I changed this to an incandescent bulb. And these are the properties that you can adjust to get a different look for your self-illuminating material. Um, I also added a level of transparency to this, 30%, uh, which I will disable in order to show you what, what this looked like beforehand. So the first thing you do is come in and check self-illumination. And then I'm going to drag this back onto here. So if we render it, it comes out all washed out like this. Um, so it looks a little, a little uh, strange. But I do have that self-illumination. You notice it wasn't just a, a, a black um, render with a little light coming out of the top of the fixture. So we're getting closer. Um, the second thing that I'll do is change this filter color back to that really dark. And I, I just, this is a trial and error thing. I, I went through and I just picked one that looked kind of like what I wanted. Um, so now that I've, oh, it won't let me change it. There we go. There we go. Okay. So I've changed my filter color. And we'll take a look at what that looks like. Okay. So this is starting to look closer, but let me get you a better look at it. So you can see the illumina you can see the illumination at the top, but it started you know it just looks like a big tan blob. Um, I want it to look like the light's coming through the fabric a little bit. So if I come in and I add transparency, I'm going to add 30% transparency to this, and you can just slide this over and render on low quality to get a quick look at what this material is going to look like. And there I start to get I start to get a little bit of light scatter through that material to make it look like it's it's just, uh, it's illuminating from the light within. So those are self-illuminating materials. Um, I also wanted to show you the difference between this one and one that I've done with a web light. Let me close all of my, uh, close all of my tool palettes here. Got a little tool palette crazy. Uh, all right, so this one here was done with a web light with the same settings. And so that web light gives you a little bit more of that um, scattered look. It just has a little bit more uh, realistic looking light scatter over a, a point light. All right. Um, did I have, I think I have one more rendering. Where did it go? I thought I had a rendering with it in it. I, uh, I did add uh, that light to a particular render. Let me go back. There it is. Okay. So that's what that render looks like. Um, I don't remember if this is the one with the uh, the point light or the web light, but you can get a, a feel for what that looks like. You can see that it's casting some of that soft yellow glow on the floor, and then take a look at the um, uh, that light shape on the on the uh, on the ceiling there that you would see in real life if you had a, a light fixture like this in your model. Um, the last thing that I want to recommend is that you guys try out that uh, the rendering service. <laughs> when I was trying to go through the renders for this, I was tying up my machine trying to come up with these really nice looking renders to show you guys today. And uh, you know, I rendered it overnight and um, I got up in the morning and I was like, you know, that's a long time to tie up my machine. Uh, why don't I try the, the rendering service? And it worked out really nicely. It came out with nice renders like this. Uh, I'll send you guys these pictures or these images um, in the data set so you can take a look at the quality of them. But I, uh, I had a really good experience with it. All right, so that's about all I have. Uh, Martin, do you want to wrap up the PowerPoint presentation? And um, then if there's a little bit of time for Q&A, we might have a couple minutes left over. I'll sure. Let... Yeah, that was, that was fun. All right. Great that's stuff. Good. I'll give you the screen. There you go. Okay. So just a, a quick note, we do have lots of additional resources. If you want to pursue this uh, further, go ahead and download the uh, slide deck from the link, and you can get uh, links to all these additional resources here. So we appreciate you joining us. Uh, there's uh, more links for uh, following up, signing up for other uh, webinars listed here and also in the slide deck. So
let's go ahead and do our last poll real quick. And we'd like to know if you learned something new in this webinar today. Give you a moment to finish answering. And uh, Victoria, we got a hundred percent. That's awesome. Learned something new. So I think I'll that's a first for me. Yeah. I'm glad everybody so, learned something. That's awesome. So we do have maybe just a, a minute or two if there are any uh, lingering questions. Um, okay. I don't see anything pending in the Q&A list, but uh, Nauman, did you have any additional uh, open questions? Uh, no, actually I had answered a few of them uh, itself. Um, and uh, basically there were a couple of questions mentioned about rendering, but uh, the settings of rendering and how we can tweak uh, the different uh, settings of uh, how much the render, uh, the light bounces between uh, the objects. So if you, Victoria can touch, the, touch on the render preset. Oh, um, so the render presets is something that I really want to cover in a future webinar. Could you guys send in some questions that you want to you wanna learn about rendering? Um, it could be cloud rendering, it could be the new rendering engine and those uh, exposure settings and that sort of thing. I, I am not prepared to answer questions about the rendering portion of things today, uh, but I, I am looking forward to preparing a webinar in the very near future about that. Um, so. And we only have about a minute left, so. Yeah, it's a, it's a really complicated topic, but it's such a cool topic, especially with the, the new the new tools, they're, they're a lot easier to, to use. Um, I've played around a lot with them, um, but they, they are a little too complicated, I think, to get into in the, in the last three web, uh, minutes of this webinar here. Um, I, well, let me, let me show you my screen real quick and I'll give you like a, a minute tour if that's uh, something I can do. Clean screen, there we go. All right, let me know when you can see. Yep. All right. This is going to be like a super quick on the fly, don't hold this against me tour, all right? Um, so on the visualize tab of the ribbon, all the way over on the right hand side, there's this rendering panel. You can change your rendering size here by clicking on the rendering drop down. There are a bunch of preset ones where you can open up more output settings and change your settings here. I am not going to delve into all of these settings, but um, they are pretty self-explanatory. They're just the output settings that you're going to get the final image. Here are a bunch of presets that come with every drawing. Uh, low, medium, and high are old holdovers from the old Mental Ray rendering engine. The new coffee break, lunch, and overnight quality are new presets that come with all drawings um, based on the new RapidRT engine. If you go to manda manage render presets, it'll open your render presets manager. You'll get the option to change whether you're rendering directly in a window. That was what I was doing, where the window popped up directly in the viewport, or you can select a region, so you just, you know, draw a window over the portion of the drawing you want to render. It's pretty good for test renders if you just want to do a very small section. You can change the render size here as well. There's your presets. You can create a new preset based on one of these and then adjust your, you know, you can name it something new, give it a description. Uh, you can render until satisfactory, which just means that it's going to render forever and ever and ever um, until you stop it. Uh, render by level or render by time. So this is a fixed time. This is just a number of passes that the renderer does over your model. Uh, quality or render accuracy, low, medium, and high quality, basically. Oh, what did I miss? I feel like I missed something. This is very fast. Uh, rendering in the cloud is here. Um, render gallery. Uh, render environment and exposure. This is a whole webinar all in and of itself. Um, I did not want to get into uh, IBL today and environment. Um, one more thing, I have it open, so I might as well show you. Uh, this is rendering.360.autodesk.com. This is where I did a lot of the renders that you saw today. Uh, not these ones, but I'm going to try to play this sun study for you of that model. This just shows you how the sun changes over the course of a day. So there's a couple of couple of cloud credits to do that, I think. Once you get the model uploaded, um, you can enable this sun study. 
and it'll create you a file. Um, and then this one was the uh, that final render that I did. Um, once you're in here, you can change your render settings and uh, adjust, um, what do you call it, uh, just adjust your settings here um, based on what you want for a final output. That's awesome. We're at the All top right. of the hour. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Thank you, Victoria. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week. Okay.